Israel has set out to deal the final blow to the Hamas terrorist group. The objective they have declared and repeated many times is to wipe them out, whatever it takes. In order to achieve this, Israel has not hesitated to mobilize all its combat capabilities by land, sea and air, including the call-up of 360,000 reservists. On the table a new land assault in the Gaza Strip. A type of operation that, unfortunately, has some precedents. In the 18 years since Israel left Gaza, the Hebrew state has carried out two ground invasions. The first in 2009 was Operation Cast Lead and had Israeli troops on the ground for 15 days. The second took place in 2014, known as Operation Protective Edge. In the second case, the invasion lasted 19 days. In both cases, the operations were preceded by the indiscriminate firing from Gaza of new numerous rockets against Israeli residential neighborhoods. These operations were, at all times, kept outside the most densely populated areas. In other words, Israeli soldiers did not enter Gaza City or other cities, but operated mainly in the areas closest to the border. However, everything indicates that this time it will be different. The Israeli armed forces has already sent out unequivocal signals through its spokesman that this time the offensive will be greater. The scope of this is going to be bigger than before and more severe. It's not going to be clean. We are going to go very, very aggressively against Hamas. We should all change the paradigm. The era of reasoning with these savages is over. Now is the time to obliterate Hamas terror infrastructure to completely erase it so that such horrors are never committed again. To begin with, Israel has stopped conducting roof knocking, a small explosive that they used to drop as an evacuation warning on the roof of a building before bombing it. It seems that following the indiscriminate massacre of Israeli civilians carried out by Hamas on the 7th of October, both the political powers and the Israeli public itself seem to have radically changed their point of view. For the time being, it does not appear that there will be any impediment to a much more extensive campaign. Even so, given this scenario, it is essential to make several key points. The first is that the Gaza Strip is one of the most densely populated areas on the planet, and a military campaign on the ground through urban warfare will be extremely costly in both resources and lives. And yes, that will be for both sides. On the other hand, we must not forget that the threats that are currently lying in wait for the Jewish state do not come from Hamas alone. Israel is in Iran's crosshairs, and the same goes for all regional groups sponsored by Tehran. This is something that we have already talked about in one of our recent videos here on Visual Policy and that explains news items like this. 15th October 2023, U.S. to send second aircraft carrier to Eastern Mediterranean. USS Eisenhower will join the USS Ford off of Israel. In this video, we will tell you in detail where these groups come from, where they operate, who finances them, and what threat they really pose to Israel. Let's get into it. I don't think there is much doubt. The Middle East is one of the most troubled regions on the planet, and within this entire region, Israel is the epicenter of a lot of conflicts and bitter enmities, either for claiming Palestine or for wanting to kick out the Jews and recover this land for Islam. What you are seeing in red are the countries or territories that are under the leadership of the Islamist regime of the Ayatollahs in Iran and are actively hostile to Israel. As you can see, the Hebrew state is practically surrounded by enemy groups and states to the north, south and east. To the south in Gaza there is Hamas and Palestinian Islamic Jihad, two groups allied with Iran, which are financed, trained and armed by the Iranian Revolutionary Guard. To the north in Lebanon there is Hezbollah, whose military wing operates mainly in the Shiite majority part of the country. We're talking about an extremely powerful terrorist group whose nature leads it to be at perpetual war against Israel. To the northeast is the al-Assad regime in Syria, a historical ally of the Ayatollahs, which is key for Iranian weapons reaching Hezbollah and for Tehran to threaten and, if necessary, attack northern Israel. And finally, in Iraq, we can find Shiite militia groups, also under direct control of Iran, such as the Badir organization and Kataib Hezbollah, among others, pro-Iranian groups that have achieved enormous influence in Iraqi politics. All these elements, 
or most of them, form an anti-Israeli and anti-Western axis known as the axis of resistance. Now, within that axis, there are two players in particular who are especially dangerous in terms of their stated goal of annihilating Israel. We are talking, of course, about Hamas, whom you're probably already quite familiar with. And above all, we are talking about Hezbollah, a key player in this whole story. A much more influential and dangerous group for Israel than any Palestinian formation, including Hamas. Nevertheless, right now, it is Hamas. And let me stress, Hezbollah in particular that pose the greatest threat to the Hebrew state. Do you want to know why and what their real capabilities are? Well, we're going to look at that right now. The Gazan Front. visual politic community, the Gaza Front is mainly divided into two groups with military power, Hamas and Palestinian Islamic Jihad. The main difference between the two groups is that Hamas, apart from its terrorist arm, also has a political arm, which is in fact, as you all know, the one that governs Gaza. Palestinian Islamic Jihad, on the other hand, is solely a terrorist group that operates primarily through its Al-Quds brigades. But when it comes down to it, both groups are united in their objectives to fight against the Hebrew state. Look at this. Iranian Supreme Leader Khamenei hosts Hamas and Islamic Jihad terror chiefs in Tehran. Impressed? I'm guessing not so much. Well, now that we know how Hamas is financed, who supplies it with weapons, and who trains its militants, there are a few more questions we have to ask. What is their real military strength? What are their capabilities? Well, we can say that Hamas has become more sophisticated in recent years. When it was founded in 1987, it was nothing more than a rudimentary, disorganized, radical militant group. A splinter group of the Muslim Brotherhood. Since then, however, things have changed a lot. Hamas, which currently has some 30,000 regular militants in its armed wing also has combat experience. Israeli interventions in Gaza in 2009 and 2014 have given the group a great deal of experience. It is now a considerably well-equipped semi-professional army, and a good example of this can be seen in its ballistic capabilities. To give you an idea, Hamas, with the help of Iran, has learned to tackle the well-known Israeli anti-missile system, the Iron Dome, and has increased both the number and range of its rockets. For example, while in 2014 Hamas was able to fire a maximum number of 4,500 rockets in 50 days, in the 2021 clashes, the group was able to fire 4,300 rockets in just a week and a half. In other words, Hamas may have increased its ballistic capabilities by a factor of five, while also improving them with rockets capable of easily reaching distant cities such as Tel Aviv or Jerusalem itself. On top of that, and this is important, Hamas has also learned how to hide its military infrastructure much better since the 2014 war. Infrastructure that today is mostly underground in bunkers, located under hospitals and schools. Not surprisingly, many of these tunnels have been built largely with construction materials donated by the international community to support reconstruction and development projects. It's a matter of priorities, I suppose. These subway tunnels are used not only for hiding, but also for importing weapons smuggled from Egypt. And if all this were not enough, during the horrific attacks of 7th of October 2023, Hamas demonstrated in intelligence with a certain level of sophistication. According to reports from military analysts, Hamas knew the position of both Israeli surveillance cameras and motion sensors that the Hebrew state had placed along the border. Many of these teams were able to destroy or disable them using electronic warfare weapons. What's more, they also conducted part of the incursion into Israel with paratroopers powered by small engines. The great risk now facing the Israel Defense Forces in urban combat is that Hamas has more such surprises in store for Gaza's cities. Surprises capable of turning a ground invasion into a hornet's nest difficult to control. 
Therefore, it is unclear at this time how far a military ground incursion into Gaza could go and how far the Israelis would be willing to penetrate. The risk could be very high. But if everything we are telling you already poses a huge danger to Israel, the truth is that we haven't seen anything yet. Believe me when I tell you that if there is one thing that worries Israel more than anything else, it is. Hezbollah. Do not doubt that for a moment. Yes, Hamas may be a much more active organization when it comes to organizing and executing attacks against the Hebrew state, but when we talk about Hezbollah, we are talking about far, far superior capabilities. Pay attention to what we are going to show you right now. Listen up. The game changer is not Palestinian. Visual politic community. What we are going to talk about next is serious. Hezbollah is a big word. Hezbollah is a Lebanese Shiite Muslim political party. That is, it belongs to the same branch of Islam that predominates Iran. Well, this group, like Hamas, also has its own armed wing. Hezbollah was officially founded in 1985, during the Lebanese civil war that lasted 15 years, between 1975 and 1990. Hezbollah had very close connections with Iran from the beginning. Tehran saw this incipient Shiite group as an opportunity to extend its influence in the area. That is why they did not hesitate to shower them with funding. In fact, it is said that even the name Hezbollah, meaning Party of Allah, was chosen by Ayatollah Khomeini himself. Be that as it may, the political branch has parliamentary representation and considerable local power, although in recent years discontent towards them has grown in Lebanon and their political influence has diminished. Even so, the same has not been true of its military wing. Since 1989, when the Taif Agreement made Hezbollah the only paramilitary militia allowed in Lebanon, its military wing has acquired enormous power, and above all, it has men. A lot of men. According to its leader, Hassan Nasrallah, in 2021, Hezbollah had some 100,000 militants in its ranks. Although international intelligence reports lower this figure to some 20,000 regular troops and between 20 to 30,000 reservists, in any case, we're talking about what is considered the most powerful non-state armed forces in the world. So much so that Hezbollah is considered to be a good deal more powerful than Lebanon's own regular army. What's more, unlike much of the Israeli army, it does have experience in ground combat. The Israelis are very good at air operations, but it is not clear to what extent they are as good at ground operations. At the very least, they are not as experienced. Meanwhile, Hezbollah currently has thousands and thousands of troops with ground experience, having fought alongside Bashar al-Assad's troops in the Syrian war. Take note of this detail. Hezbollah's troops know what it means to fight, and this could be an important advantage. Now, why do we say that Hezbollah is really crucial to Israel, and in general, to the evolution of the conflict? Well, you see, Basically, we say that because here we are talking about an army perfectly comparable to that of any country. We're not talking, therefore, of a mere terrorist group that goes around in jeeps and pickups modified in a shoddy workshop. Hezbollah has relatively advanced weapons, such as tanks and artillery launchers, mainly from Iran and Russia, as well as missiles. Lots and lots of missiles and rockets. To give you an idea, according to the Center for Strategic and International Studies, Hezbollah has about 130,000 rockets and missiles. Yes. I didn't mess with that number, I really did say 130,000 rockets and missiles. A large part of this arsenal consists of portable, unguided, ground-to-ground -ground artillery rockets. However, they also have numerous anti-aircraft and anti-ship missiles, as well as medium-range guided missiles capable of striking specific targets deep inside Israeli territory. This is much, much, much more than Hamas has at its disposal, and that is why many think that if Hezbollah decided, as of today, to enter into an armed conflict against Israel, the damage could be considerable. Yes, Israel is still stronger, but the damage could become very significant. This and not Hamas, is precisely what generates a lot of concern, not only in Israel, but also in countries like the United States and the United Kingdom. As we said earlier, this is what explains new stories like these. U.S. positions 12,000 sailors off Israel with second carrier. Ten American ships from two strike groups are intended to deter a wider conflict. 
UK sends ships and aircraft to Mediterranean to support Israel. If Hezbollah enters the conflict on a large scale and uses its ballistic force against Israel, it is very likely that the Hebrew state would need air support, and perhaps also support from the sea, to stop such an offensive and limit the damage. Support that the United States and the United Kingdom seem willing to offer for the time being. And we say entering on a large scale because Hezbollah has already been carrying out small attacks of low magnitude, but which serve to send a very clear message. We are here. We are watching everything you do. And if we consider that you go beyond the limits, our rockets will turn into a rain of fire against you. Hezbollah shoots at IDF posts fires missile at tank and fresh Lebanon border clashes. But this is not all. Hezbollah is not only extremely dangerous to Israel, its threat goes far beyond that. Because yes, unlike Hamas, Hezbollah is a group that has and does operate internationally. In fact, this group has been responsible for numerous terrorist attacks against Jews abroad. In other words, for Hezbollah, the war is not only against the existence of the state of Israel, but against Jewish people. Do you want some examples? Well, we'll give you a few. I'm sure some of them will be very familiar to you. Both Lebanese officials, and Western intelligence itself have blamed Hezbollah and Hezbollah's subsidiary groups for carrying out kidnappings and suicide attacks. For example, in 1983, Hezbollah committed a suicide bombing that destroyed the US military headquarters in Beirut. It killed 241 military personnel. They carried out another attack against a French barracks, which killed 58 Gallic paratroopers. And also in the same year, another suicide attack against the US embassy, killing 63 people. In 1992, Hezbollah attacked the Israeli embassy in Argentina, killing 22 people and injuring more than 240 in 1994. Also in Argentina, car bombs were placed against the AMIA the Jewish Center in Buenos Aires, killing 85 people and injuring more than 300. Even in Europe and somewhat more recently, Hezbollah blew up a bus full of Israeli tourists in Burgas, Bulgaria, killing six people and injuring 32. Bulgaria says clear signs Hezbollah behind Burgas bombing. As you can see, we are talking about a terrorist group much more powerful and aggressive than Hamas or the Palestinian Islamic Jihad. It's better financed and with a more solid organization that also has active cells abroad. According to various think tanks specializing in the Middle East, Iran provides Hezbollah with funding of between 100 and 800 million dollars per year, depending on the year. For all these reasons, the entry of Hezbollah into the conflict could mean a radical change in the situation. The entry of more players, much more pressure on the Israeli defense forces, and, if necessary, even a possible escalation with Iran. Let me stress here, Israel will most likely remain much stronger, but the problem is that we would already be talking about a very different conflict. From a punitive operation, we would move on to a real war that could jeopardize many of the achievements that Israeli society has made in recent years. We are talking about many casualties, the paralysis of a large part of the economic activity, and a great deal of material damage. That is the threat. But having come this far, now it's your turn. Do you think that Hamas will manage to survive this war? Do you think that Hezbollah will end up entering the conflict with a large scale attack on Israel. How do you think this conflict will end? Leave us your opinions below in the comments and most importantly click on the like button if you liked this video. And remember you can help us to keep creating more and better content for you by subscribing to our Patreon. In exchange you will get newsletters, exclusive content, gifts and much more. We'll leave you the link in the description. Once again thank you so very much for being here. All the best. See you next time.